everyone, and welcome to a brand new episode of Orgasmic Living. I am your host, Patty Alfonso, known to many as the Orgasmic Body Whisperer, creator of Pole Dancing for Consciousness and the Orgasmic Body Love Experience. And I am so excited for today's guest. I, I you know, I, I was pondering, I have got like the most amazing friends and the most amazing people that I know on this planet. And I'm so honored to bring them on the show and talk with them about the topic of orgasmic living. But today's guest, her name is Glenice Hughes. And oh my gosh, I feel like I've known Glenice for about a thousand lifetimes. And she is one of the most magical, amazing women that I know and that I have the honor of calling a friend. She facilitates thousands of people around the world to change, to create magic, to create the life that they desire. She has major magic with her body, which I know that we will get into today. Um, and I'm, I'm just super excited to start this conversation. So without further ado, welcome the amazing Glenys Hughes. Yay! <laughs> Hello, you. dear. How are you? I'm so good. I'm so much better to, to be with you here today in this, uh, in this Zoom and talking about bodies. How the heck does it get any better than this? Yay! Um, so the question that this season is going to be all about is what does orgasmic living mean to you? But with you, I also want to dive into what does orgasmic living look like for you in your life? Because you are one of those people that I truly feel is really creating her life moment by moment and living and choosing orgasmically. So, so what does orgasmic living mean to you, Lenise? <laughs> ah, yeah, you know, for me, orgasmic living is including my body in my living. And this hasn't been the way I have lived my life. Uh, you know that, Patty, some of your listeners might not know, uh, but it really has been in the last few years where I've started including her in everything. And that has created created such an orgasmic living. So it doesn't matter if I'm doing the dishes or if I'm swimming in my swimming pool or if I'm uh, flying on a private jet that I did recently. It doesn't matter what I'm doing with including her, that is orgasmic living. Mm. So tell me what is what is including your body and your life? What does that look like for you? Yeah. So what that looks like for me is actually asking my body the questions that relate to her. And that's pretty much everything because everything is with my body. So whether it's the clothes that I'm wearing or the food that I'm eating or um, the going in the swimming pool or going for a run or any of that, it all has to do with my body. And so actually asking her what she would like. And if if what I've decided, if that's what she would like, or if she would like something different, it's just this constant, what I call communion with my body where it's always, and, and I just, I just ask it as a question, usually just in my head, you know, truth body, would you like to wear this? Or would you like to wear this? Or I might just look at my closet and say, body, show me and kind of get a sense of what pops out at me in, in that sense. But it's the constant question and letting my body have a voice. Yeah. So tell me, uh, you know, what pops when you're talking is because I know this, this idea of really asking our body questions and really listening to what our body desires, I think it's a very different way of being with your body especially a very different way that we've been taught on how to be with our bodies. And I remember like when I first started on this journey of including my body in my life, there were times when like, I wouldn't listen, you know, and I would still choose what my head wanted me to choose. And, you know, it didn't always work out that well. Do you have any examples of, especially in the beginning of this journey of, of, uh, deciphering like, okay, what's my head and what is it really that's my body? And for me, it's always about like what it creates, you know, uh, when I follow my head, it creates something. When I really allow my body to lead, it creates something else. Do you have any examples of what that, what, how that shows up for you and for your life? Yeah. Um, 
I'm going to talk about this story and I'm not sure how it relates, but I'm sure it'll come together, but it's the thing that popped into my head. And it's uh, years ago, probably back in 2013, I was, um, hadn't traveled first class on an airplane before, uh, always just bought the economy seat. That was just the way it was. And I had, was actually facilitating a class on communing with your body. And later that afternoon, after I'd facilitated whatever one it was, that I kept like getting this idea, which I thought was just me thinking was to like, I, I had booked a flight and it was to actually um, upgrade. I kept thinking, upgrade that flight, upgrade that flight. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like that you don't, I don't do that type of energy that was there with, with my thoughts about it. And then I realized that that wasn't a normal thought for me. So what is going on here? And I just said, Hey body, would you like me to upgrade the flight? And, and I just got, it was just really light and expansive. And I was like, Oh boy. Oh boy. And because I'd never done it before, I assumed it was going to be thousands and thousands of dollars. And so what I said next to my body was, okay, what can, you know, what magic can we co-create to, to create whatever's required for this to occur? And then I sent an email to my travel agent and asked her if she could give me uh, the price to upgrade the flight. And by the time, about five minutes before she emailed back with the price, I had an order come through my store, which was for maybe $300 or something. And the cost to upgrade my flight was $300. And it was just this huge awareness of like, wow, I like how many times we think our, our, like we would decide something, but maybe it's actually our body asking. And so it's, it's that where you just have to be willing to ask a question like, Hey body, is this you, you know, Hey body, are you asking for this? And, and really be willing to, to not have a point of view about it so that you can get that clear, clear awareness from it. And I love what you're what you're alluding to here, clearly. Uh, but allowing our body to contribute to whatever it is that the body is actually asking for, right? So you're like, all right, body, what's it gonna take? And then boom, magic, money, done. Because <laughs> that's also another piece that people don't really, you know, dive into too much. Is is I mean, it's it's what my work is about, right? And what a lot of your work is about too. It's not just asking the body, but allowing the body to contribute to the magic that can be created uh, for the things that you're asking for. I love, I love that you brought that up. I think that's a perfect example. Um, I remember the first time I upgraded to, to first class, I also thought, oh my God, it's gonna be like $5,000. I could never, you know, and I was like, no, well, I'm getting that intuitive hit. My body is saying, yes, let's go for it. I know it'll be a gift to her. I know it'll be a gift to me. And it ended up being like, that was like a $500 upgrade, you know, on Emirates or something like that, traveling from Dubai to somewhere else. It was just insane. I was like, what? <laughs> so how else, so how else, let's, let's um, play with the energy of orgasm with the energy of orgasm and we we've both studied similar modalities so we know that the energy of orgasm is the creation the creation of your life the creation of your body so how do you use that energy to create your life like what are some of the things that you do um to 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 have that energy in your everyday life not just in the bedroom yeah yeah or the kitchen table but so <laughs> Um, it's actually being willing to be that energy throughout the day. And so I, I talk a lot about creating, for lack of a better word, habits. So I use the reminder app on my phone a lot. So I have one that pops up every couple hours that just says orgasmic energy. So that I remind myself to be that energy because otherwise it is that energy of just, just doing it when you're copulating with someone or with yourself. It's really that space of being that energy all the time. And I was just going through a, with a group this morning around money stuff. And it was really about being the orgasmic energy with regards to money and cash and wealth and opulence and fortune and luxury and like being it while you're dealing with those things, whether you're paying 
paying bills or counting your cash or whatever it is, being that orgasmic energy. And, and then the more you be it, the more, the more you be it. <laughs> I love it. Tell, uh, Glenice, what is, what does that feel like in your body? When you say being the energy and asking for the energy, like what, it, what, because here's the thing that I have learned over the years in, in speaking about this topic and playing with clients around this topic is that it, it shows up different for everyone. Right. And, and part of the, the purpose, right. Of having these conversations with different people is because I want to put it out there in the world that it doesn't have to look a certain way orgasmic energy for you and for your body can be different than for someone else's body. So what does it feel like in your body when you see that, that reminder on your phone and you're like, all right, I got to be this energy. What happens? Like what happens in your body? <laughs> I'm already getting it. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> for me, it's always smiling and joyful and I get all wiggly and jiggly and like, Ooh. <laughs> so what does it feel like in your body? Yeah, it's, I often will start it by like actually asking my body to exponentialize the blood flow to my genitals. That's actually what usually how I start it. Uh -huh. um, once I have that, then it's like, whoo. now sometimes I don't have to start that way. It just depends, you know, what I was choosing the moment before, if I was cranky or something like that. But often that's, I'll just like ask them about it, exponentialize the blood flow. And then it's that, that expansive, really intense, delicious, yummy, smiling. Definitely. Usually there's like some giggling. And then just like, like you say with that jittery, like it's like not even trying to control sitting still or staying still or whatever. And sometimes I'll even do it standing up so that I can have a little bit more freedom with it, like a little bit more spaciousness with it. So yeah, I, yeah, you know, it, speaking of like, like the, the sort of this, the, there's just this, like, um, it's a rumbling of energy and like bubbly and effervescent and exuberant. And, and it's funny because when I started speaking on stage, I thought, oh my gosh, and you can see it, you can see it like on my media videos that I, there's just all of this energy that cannot be contained. And the, the words that you just used that I love is that feeling of being out of control, right? Because we're so taught to like, especially as I'm going to speak personally, me as a girl, as a woman, you know, sit still, be quiet, don't move too much, like settle down, right? But when I'm really living and being that energy, there's an exuberance that's that's, you can't contain it. And then allowing the body to express that. However, that is like my butt always shakes. I feel like I must've been a dog in a past life. So I'm always like wiggling my butt. <laughs> My, my butt, she has a, a mind of her own. She's like, Hey, um, um, so let's, let's talk about like being out of control. Cause I think that that's a huge thing that that's important to address. So, so what is being out of control, like with your body and with orgasmic energy, how does that show up? How do you know when you're like really letting go? Yeah, I'm trying to find words for that. It's, no. uh, you know, I guess the, the, the best way to describe it for me is, is there's nothing going on in my head like mm -hmm. that, you know, where there's not a like, you know, is anybody looking at me or, you know, this is silly or whatever those barriers that I bring up with the thinking part is like, that's all gone. And I'm just totally present with my body. Yeah. And that, that can be at a grocery store that can be on the kitchen table that can be anywhere. Like it's just that, that absolute spaciousness of, of us as the beings. Yeah. And what comes up for me when you say that is the willingness to embody and not worry about judgment not worry about what people are thinking when they're looking at you like that not even entering into the the psyche when you're really living orgasmically and really allowing your energy to have that body and to be that body you're really like beaming that right onto everyone around you and some people may not be so comfortable so they may shoot you a dirty look or whatever but when you're really truly then you don't even let that stop you 
like whether it's the grocery store or your kitchen <laughs> or you're eating mango on a trampoline with a bunch of people and all of a sudden you just like burst into spontaneous like Woo, that was the best mango I've ever had. <laughs> that happened to me recently. I went to a retreat. I went to a retreat and we were all just like hanging out. It was a beautiful day outside. Oh my gosh, the sky was so crisp and blue and the weather was amazing. The sun was shining down. The trees were like rustling in the wind. And I was just laying there, just totally relaxed, just like you were saying, total space. Nothing really happening in the head, thank goodness. So feeling so alive and so vibrant. And my friend came and she had some mango and I was like, oh, can I have some? And she put that mango in my mouth. And the second that mango touched my lips, my whole body just like started to have like that orgasmic yumminess. And everybody around me was like, oh, well, she really enjoyed that mango. And I was like, whoa. And I allowed that energy to just reverberate through my whole body. It was one of the most delicious pieces of fruit I have ever had. Um, so I love that, like being out of control, being totally present with your body, not being in your head, uh, and not allowing judgment to, to shut that down, to yeah. shut it down. Can you, what, what do you got? What, what do you want to say, Glenice? I've been talking a lot. What do you, what do you know? What do you want to say? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> I usually have so many words, Patty. What's happening? <laughs> We're having an orgasmic moment. <laughs> We're having an orgasmic moment of just total, like there's nothing happening in the head. So yes. words can't always show up. Yeah. Tell me about your ride in the private jet. Oh. There you go. Enough said. Just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Your yeah. body was like, oh, I had been waiting for that forever. So true. It's so true. Yeah. How did it, that come about? What? What? Oh, I tell you what, it's it's just yeah. So I've been talking about private jets for years. Yes. And then in July, I did a radio show about is your life big enough? I called it that. And then, um, and I talked about a private jet and then a listener messaged me and said, Hey, I have a friend who books people on private jets. Would you want to talk with her? And my first response as I read the message was no, I can't afford a private jet. Why would I talk to somebody who books people? It was very interesting, Patty, but luckily I caught like that sometimes, right? <laughs> Right. So luckily I caught myself and I, like, I recognized how dishonoring I was being of my ask. Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know what, that I'm going to ask a question. So I asked if talking to her friend who, you know, books, people in private jets would create the future I desired or decay the future I desired. And I uh -huh. got that it would create. So mm -hmm. I said, yes, instead of saying, no, I can't afford, I just said, yes, I would love to talk with your friend. The super cool thing that occurred though, Patty, was the moment I wrote that and hit send was I remembered a post, a Facebook post from two years ago where another listener who also is a Facebook friend had posted that she had a free private jet flight from Calgary to Victoria or something like that. Did anybody want it? Huh. What? Yeah. <laughs> like what? I didn't even know that was a thing. So um, I couldn't go. And I remember posting underneath because Rodney and I were going to England for the week for well, a few weeks, the same time. And I posted underneath and I said, listen, I cannot go. I mean, I'm tempted to cancel England, but I can't go. So, you know, if this ever comes up again, let me know. And I screenshot it because it was such an invitation. Like, how is this even possible? But anyway, then I promptly forgot about it until that moment when I replied to this other listener. And then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to ask. So I went, found the woman who posted originally and I just Facebook messaged her and I said, Hey, do you still do this? And she emailed back a day later or something like that. And she said, well, I do. What are you looking for? 
And she said, is it like a, are you looking for a free trip? Are you looking to book something? And I'm like, well, I'm actually open to anything. Tell me what you got. And, uh, and so she told me some possibilities and I said, well, I'm looking for something for my birthday, which was in August. And, um, you know, just keep me posted. And, uh, she didn't, she didn't have anything open up in terms of the, the gifted one in August. And then just randomly, I got a text from her. Um, I believe it was a week ago, uh, and or two, I don't even know what day it is. doesn't matter. And she just said, Hey, I've got, um, a an empty basically what it is is an empty jet that needs to move to another spot so then they get um they can fill them if they would like so she offered it to me uh as a gift and we went on a friday and then we flew back a uh, regular you know um regular plane which was like okay no more of this from now on it's private jet what's uh -huh. it gonna take body because we had a lot of fun on that private jet <laughs> gosh I love it I love it oh my gosh that just like turned my whole body on <laughs> I love it and I love you know I love the the part that I really love that I want to highlight for listeners about your story is that this was an ask that you had in your universe for a really long time right and sometimes you know we ask for something and then we don't get it the next day so then we give up and we let it go and then we don't think about it anymore and then it becomes you know whatever in your universe because you didn't get it or you didn't create it but some asks sometimes take a little while right it takes a little while for for you to be willing to receive it for the universe to rearrange itself to give it to you right and i just i really i really have a lot of appreciation for that just because i know so many people who just give up so soon on what they really desire. And then they think that they can't have it. And then that creates a whole other trajectory and reality for yourself and for your life. So I love that you kept asking and kept putting it out there. And at the right perfect time, you know, it pinged. Oh yeah. I oh yeah. I mean, this is amazing. So what was it like? And if you want to add to that, it's totally, of course. And then I, I really do want to know, like, what was it like just being on the plane and traveling just you and Rodney? For those of you that don't know, Rodney is hubby. It's her husband. Um, so so she, tell me more. Tell me more. It's very exciting. Was it orgasmic for you? Oh, so <laughs> orgasmic just listening to it. <laughs> it was so orgasmic. I do want to add to that, though, Patty, because yes, I... Yes. I, I I don't know that I was truly asking for a long time. I was talking about it for a long time. Yeah. I didn't actually start asking for it until I did that radio show in July. And what I started doing was playing with the energy of what it would be like to be on one. Mm -hmm. And what I know now, because I went through the whole process, I've been there and on this side of it, I was not willing to receive it because it truly like before now, because it was truly a level of receiving I'd never been willing to have before. Like it would have actually been so much more ease for me to receive if I'd have paid for it. The fact that it was gifted to me yeah. was a level, honestly. And I asked her, you know, I mean, I did ask her for it. Like I, like I asked her, but then the actual like receiving of it, there were times I felt I was going to go out of my, out of my skin. Like it was just like, oh my gosh. And prior to me truly asking for it, I wouldn't have received it. Like it would have ended up being that I would have been away every weekend. She would have had something or whatever. Like, I just know I wouldn't have created it. So definitely there's lots of situations where we, it does take time, of course. Um, and then also we've got to really got to look at, are we willing to receive it? And that just, yeah. I, I'm sorry. Cause I'm having like a, like a, Tell me, Glenice, because you said I wasn't really asking for it. I was just talking about it. And I feel like that's out in the world too, where we're just talking about something, but not really asking for it. What's the, like, what was the difference for you? Like, how do you know, oh, wait, I was just talking, like, talking about it then. This is when I really asked for it. And this is when I really, can you talk about that? Yeah. Because the talking about it for me, if you would hear me talk about it before I was truly asking for it was just like, um, truly a one way direction energetically, like, oh, it sounds like a good idea. Or like right now I could say, 
oh yeah, having a private island, that would be a really cool thing to have. But there's this energy of it just going out where there's no receiving. So I'm just talking about it. Yeah. And I so, love even the way your hands, when you're saying it, your hands, it's like putting it out there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was just talking about it. It was just like out there somewhere, not yeah. anything that I could actually have in my universe. And that's like, that's the other part of it. It was such an impossibility for me. Like if you would have said to me when I was talking about it before, Hey, you know, are you going to choose a private jet at a private? I'm like, I can't afford it. You know, like, so that, so I, I wasn't actually choosing it. I wasn't actually asking for it. And then when I did that radio show and I was speaking about it, even before that gal messaged me, I started playing with the energy of it because what I was looking at when I did that radio show about asking for a bigger life, I was recognizing that in a lot of ways I've created every, well, I've created beyond what I never imagined possible. So on a certain level, I stopped asking because yeah. it's like, well, I'm not sure how you get better than this. So yeah. like, like <laughs> I'm saying, how does it get better? But I'm really not sure how does it really get better? <laughs> I've, I've been there. I get it. <laughs> right? So I recognize that one of the tangible things that I could get an energy of, because I didn't have really any other asks, was a private jet. It was one of the things that I hadn't truly, truly received, asked for, chosen. And so I started playing with the energy of like, what would it be like to be on one? And when I'd fall asleep at night, I would just imagine myself being on there to get that energy of it. And then it's like, whoosh, so quickly it showed up in once I started truly asking for it. Yeah, that's a really, that's a really cool thing too. And, and yes, there are times when like we ask for something, we're not ready to receive it. So some things have to shift and change and we have to, you know, maneuver that. But then, then there are other times when you are really ready and willing to receive it and it does show up really quickly. So, you know, it's all, on, I, I think everything is on a spectrum, right? There's no black and white. There's no like, this is this way and this is that way. So even, you know, that feels like a really, just like a spectrum of where you're at in terms of what you're asking for and, and the willingness to receive what you're asking for. Yeah. Um, so I had asked you before we took that little detour, like, what did it feel like on the plane and, and <sighs> what? I'm, I'm curious because it, it feels like it, it opened up something totally new and different. So I'm curious, what was it like on the plane and what are you noticing now that's different in your life now that you had that experience or created that experience? Yeah. So on the plane was like, I was so grateful because when we got there, when we got to the, the lounge part, the, the pilot came right in and introduced himself and said, we're just getting everything finished up. So we'll just be a couple of minutes, have a seat and, you know, we'll just be in soon. And it was about 10 minutes. And I was so grateful because it really allowed me to get present. I'm not sure that I would have even remembered walking out to the plane. Like I was in such a like, Oh my gosh. And it just allowed me to be like, okay, you know what? Let's be here. Let's be present. Let's truly receive this. So then even walking out, um, honestly, Patty, this is a funny word, but it felt normal. Like it felt like this is the way it is. Yes. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, like it was so much that. And then when once we got on the plane and it was a very beautiful plane, so there's all sorts of different types of private jets. And this was a very beautiful it's seat. I think 12 people could have rode on it. Um, I'm grateful. It was just Hubby and I and the two pilots. Uh, and it was just, it just felt normal. And I put some pictures in a group that I'm on on Facebook. And so many people who don't know me at all commented that, like I, I look, I looked the part, like I, I fit there. And I, about, I don't know, a few months ago, somebody posted it on Facebook and they said, I went into a restaurant wearing a crown and I sat at the table wearing a crown until it felt normal to sit there wearing a crown. And that's what I felt like. I felt like this is normal. Now this is, this is what I choose 
this, this, and it's not even just a private jet. It's that energy of being all of me. And not that I need a private jet to do that. Cause when we flew back on air Canada, I was willing to be that there too. Like, and I was really aware of it cause it was only like two days difference or three days difference. So I was really like, okay, I can, I can go, oh, I can't have that again. I have to, I can only have that on a private jet or I can be like, no, I be that all now. I be the wealth of me everywhere I be. And that's what I feel like it really opened up was this recognition of, of who I be and what, what I maybe always thought was impossible for me, or maybe didn't even think it because I wouldn't really look at it is now I can actually actualize anything. I've just got to ask for it. That's, that's been the greatest gift of this is like, actually maybe ask. <laughs> ask for it. I love it. You know, this sort of um, talking about orgasmic living and like our body's ability to contribute to what we desire and to what we want to create. I love how this story illustrates that so beautifully. Um, one of the things that I talk a lot about is that our bodies really, they desire so much more than what our minds and our heads keep telling us, right? And when we like let go and allow our bodies to lead us into these kinds of new experiences, right? You know, body, just like the first class ticket, body was like, um, yeah, let's do this. And when you allow your body to lead and you ask the questions and you make the choices and you just keep moving forward, the change that that can ripple into the rest of your life, you know, and having that sense now. I mean, I, I love that you said that. I love that it just felt normal. It felt like this is how it is now. Whether it's you sitting in the private jet or sitting in your kitchen, you're different. I can feel it. I'm like, something shifted, Glenice. Like, oh, we haven't talked in a few months, right? I'm like, wait, something new has opened, Glenice. What is that? <laughs> and that's really like the gift of being present with your body, allowing your body to contribute to you and, and living orgasmically. I love it. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So much fun. So, wow. so much fun. It's so delicious and like expansive. And I, I mean, the words that just keep, it's like luxury and exuberant and, you know, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Yes. I love it. What else, Glenice? What else do we want to talk about? <laughs> what else is orgasmic living to you? What else? Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting because just space, space is orgasmic living to me. Uh, and I get how much, you know, space, physical space we had on the plane, on the private jet compared to the other plane. And, you know, back from 2013 on, we've pretty much flown first class everywhere we fly. Uh, so, you know, we have more space, but then you get on a private jet and there's even more space or where we live here, we live on an acreage where we have space. Yeah. And, and that for me, my body loves space. And that is something that I, one, I never even recognized before these past few years. Um, and two, you know, in terms of like, let's say eating and my body, I always misidentified that space. I always thought that that what we might call hunger was the, like, I, I must eat because I'm hungry, but really it was my body gifting me the energy of space and how much more space I can be. And it doesn't mean food is bad and you shouldn't eat. That's not what I mean at all. But to recognize there's possibly a difference. And there was a huge one for me in terms of that. And so space, whether it's space around me or space within me, that is, that is such an orgasmic way of living for me now. Yeah, I love that. You know, space is also being able to occupy a lot of energetic space, but also the space around me. Those are things that have also been really important to me that I've really had to cultivate, especially on this journey of, of orgasmic living. And, and, you know, space, like for me also, is just things being, things around me being beautiful, right? The, the things that I'm looking at to be beautiful, to be, for things to be organized and clean and, and crisp and clear. Like I, I love that. And I'm curious, cause I know that you have, that you practice fasting. So I'm curious about the fasting and the space 
and the orgasmic living and the luxury and how all that did fasting have something to do with you really tapping into space and, and needing space? Um, I don't know that it's about like, I don't know that it, I've always required a lot of space, like physical space around me. Like I don't like large groups of people. I'm not going to be in the center of a big party or something like that. Like I've always just, that's just been a natural space requirement in that sense. Uh, but I didn't have the internal space and it wasn't until I started fasting. And so um, for anybody who's not familiar, fasting can be anything from say not eating for eight hours and then eating in a 16 hour window or something that I do is called alternate day fasting, mean, meaning I eat one day in, a, in an eight hour window and then I don't eat for, you know, 40 hours or something like that. And so it's, it sounds really extreme for a lot of people. And it's, you've just got to listen to your body with it. I've also done three day fasts and five day fasts. And when I first started, it really was this huge recognition of what I had misidentified as hunger, which was actually just space. My body now loves the spaciousness of not having food. Whereas before I'd been like, Oh, this is hunger. I must eat and then eat a lot so that I don't get hungry again so that I never had the internal space and um it it has changed everything for me it's been about uh, well, I started in January of 2020 so a year and eight or nine months now I guess um and it's just changed everything one I had so many points of views about what you needed to live in terms of food that I've really actually proven <laughs> the exact opposite <laughs> So there was that. And also really looking at what I was using food for, you know, what, what I had decided it would give me or trying to shut my awareness down with it and all of that insanity. Um, but this spaciousness and appreciating the spaciousness and even excited about it. Like I went to a wedding this summer and didn't do any fasting pretty much. And when I came home after three days, it was like, Oh, time for a five day fast. Cause I, that's not fun. Like I just, I was wanted to go back to in a sense me. And I mean, not that I can't be me with food, but it was just, it was so, it was just so magical to actually have that be a choice and have that be something I desired and allowing my body to have such a strong voice now to be like this, this isn't, this, this doesn't feel good. Like let's change this and being able to change it really easily. So. Yeah. And I love the, the ease that you have with it, you know, in terms of, because sometimes I think, especially with food, people can get so rigid about this is what I'm supposed to eat and this is how I'm supposed to do it. And I'm so, and then, and then there's no inclusion in what the body desires in that moment, right? But I love that you know you went to a wedding and you you ate, you allowed yourself, and then I was like, oh well, now I'm gonna do this. So there there, there feels like a, and this I think also goes with like just being out of control right? Being that energy of out of control with your body where you can just take whichever path road today leads and then tomorrow change it. And then the next day change it again. And, you know, allowing yourself to, to have all of that without judging yourself and without, you know, beating yourself up or, you know, it's like, okay, well, I did that for three days. Now I'm going to do something else. <laughs> Yeah. And it's so, it's so much the natural way of our body. I mean, if you think of it, most times it doesn't feel yummy to eat the same thing every day, all day, every day, all day, like our bodies aren't like that. So it's no different with when we eat or what we eat or like any of that clothes we wear. It's really just being willing to be in communion with our bodies and, and let them choose. And one thing that I found, and this was years and years ago, this is before fasting even, is that I had so many points of views about what my body would want to eat, like the right food and the wrong food, that when I first started communing with my body, I wouldn't even ask her what she wanted to eat. I would ask her what she wanted to wear. I'd ask her different things, but no way was I going to ask her what she wanted to eat because my point of view was she was going to tell me lettuce and carrot sticks and that was it. Right, right. <laughs> but they could just lettuce and carrot sticks. <laughs> right. So I'm not even going to ask you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I don't want to eat lettuce and carrot sticks. <laughs> like, yeah. So then I started, I call it baby steps, and I'd be like, okay, body, I'm going to ask you, but I might not listen. 
Right. So that's how I started. And then what I found was about 95% of the time she asked for what I was going to have anyway. Yeah. And that was eye opening to me because she doesn't have a point of view about good food or bad food yeah. at all. Yeah. 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 And I think the most important piece, one of the most important pieces with this is that everybody's body is different, right? I do want to say that for people that are listening, like I've tried fasting and it, it's not something that my body and I enjoy. Um, and I'm also one of those people who could have a cheeseburger every day for every meal and not get tired of it <laughs> and still be, to me, a cheeseburger and fries is a complete meal, right? You've got your carb, you've got your veggie, you've got your protein. I mean, what more could you ask for, right? Um, so, so, and I am one of those people, like I get into those things where I just eat the same thing and then I, and then I put it aside and then I eat the same thing for another week after that. And then I put that aside and, you know, so really the important for me is, is everybody's body is different and whether fasting works for you or something else works for you, the important thing is to ask your body and to be really present with her or him. If you have a, a penis body. Um, I was like, I'm going to say the word, but I don't know if I'm going to get explicit on my podcast, but whatever. Um, it's just, again, just to get present with your body and ask your body and your body is, is you can hear from Glenice's experiences and from my own, they speak, they will tell you, they can be very clear and very loud if we just listen. And I also, to bring it back to orgasmic living, like I don't really, I, I have not found a way to live orgasmically without a body, right? I think that this, this planet with these kinds of bodies, you, you know, if you didn't have a body, I'm not sure that orgasmic living would be possible because <laughs> there's a lot of things on this planet, like Lenny said, that are specifically for these kinds of bodies and the, the search for, and the quest for pleasure is an embodied quest. You know, if you're not connected to your body, if you're not in your body, if you're not having communion with your body, then that quest may be a little, I think, strange. That's just my interesting point of view. What do you know about that, Glenys? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, without a body, you or, orgasmic isn't even a possibility. You know, whether it's the orgasmic feeling of sunshine on your skin or, you know, some nice furry kitty or puppy hair, you know, touching you or so, like without a body, you'd have none of that. Yeah. So definitely to me, orgasmic living is is with the body. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. Period. I don't know. <laughs> Exclamation point. <laughs> Maybe two or three. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. Ah, oh, Glennies, thank you so much for taking the time to be with me here today. I know that we both have free gifts for the people that are listening. So if you want to tell us a little bit about your free gift, and I promise that the link will be somewhere around this audio or video, wherever you happen to find it and listen to it, check out the description. All links will be there, but tell us about your free gift. Yeah. So, uh, earlier this year, I guess probably June, I did a five day fast. I believe it was my third one. I do about one a month right now. It depends what my body asks for, but that's been about what I do. Uh, and so what I did was I recorded a podcast every day of that to talk about my journey with it. So if there's any listeners that are curious about it and you don't have to be curious from the place of you want to do it. Cause like Patty said, it might not be a thing for your body. The reason that I know for sure it's a thing for my body is because it is ease to do. So that's what I always say to people. If you're struggling with it, chances are that's your body's way of saying no, thank you. Um, but that is my free gift. You can download that five part, actually end up being a six part um, free podcast. Uh, and it's a private podcast. So you can't find it anywhere except through the special link. Um, so I invite you, if that's of interest to you, to go and listen to it and uh, yeah, join me on the journey. Yay. I love it. Thank you so much, Glenice. And for those of you that want to, I've, I've identified over the years of doing this work personally and with clients, 10 pillars to living orgasmically. So if you want to find out what those pillars are, go to orgasmic living 
quiz.com and check out where you are on your journey to living orgasmically. Glennis Hughes, I adore you. Thank you so much for being here and for sharing your delicious, spacious, uh, fasting, uh, private jet plane, orgasmic life. I am just so grateful that I get to know you and play with you. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.